Okay, I thought I would do a little video while I'm doing this setup of this top of the lamb um, tie up. I read about it in Katie Meek. Um, she did an article in um, Complex Weaver's Journal in October of 2017. So, this is my own spin on it. Um, underneath the treadle, you can see the beads, which I put on the cords before. And then I threaded it through the treadle. I put the dowel here to just sort of hold it steady so it's not always dragging down in the in the dust when the treadle's not in use. You can see my markings for the lower lamb here. I'll explain that in a minute. So the cord goes up through the lower lamb, up through the upper lamb, and then I tied a knot in the top so it wouldn't fall back through. I didn't want to buy additional beads and I don't want them slipping down through here and either getting caught or scratching my lambs all up. So, and this is nice because I can take this out if I want to, but I just wove 11 yards of towels with a four shaft tie up done this way. And the knots held really well. It didn't fall back through the upper lamb or anything. So, and then I'm just, these won't, I'm just doing this right now just while I'm threading it. But the, I will probably take the anchor pin out and just... I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but um, the, I'm going to use the anchor pins. Uh, Katie Meek used the arrow pins, but I'm going to use the anchor pins when I'm doing the tie-up. And I might just keep the little bucket of them back there. But it's very easy to reach without the cloth beam or the knee beam. And right, you see right here, I'm, it, I don't have to reach at all. It's right here. So what I'll do is... Um, I'll beam the warp. You can see the last warp still there, the thrums. But I'll beam the warp first, and then I'll thread the heddles <clears throat> and um, slay the reed. And then before I tie it onto the front of the loom, I can sit right here and do the tie-up. And then come back and tie it onto the um, cloth rod. And then I'll pull the pin out of the top. And that's how I did the last warp, and it worked so well. I didn't have a sore back when I was done. Any adjusting I did, I did right here. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. I, the markings. I used to do the Vastuga way with these markings on there. I used my old cords to try to mark where these would get marked. And it worked out really well. So, say I have to tie up the, this first lower lamb on the first one. I would put the anchor pin... Ugh, here in this first for the first three lambs the second three lambs would be in this white one in between here and the last two lambs because I only have eight shafts the last two lambs would be in this hole right here and the, and the same thing for the top the top um, lambs the first two lambs would be in this first hole sec uh, first three lambs would be in this first hole second three lambs in this hole and the last two lambs in this hole and you, you just keep going if you have, you know, 10, 12 shafts, but I only have eight shafts. So, and that at least gives you a good starting point. It may not be perfect, but when you have to tweak, instead of just having this vast um, section of white cord and trying to remember if your finger slips or whatever, where you pulled that pin out, which way you have to go, it's a lot easier to say, you know, it, it was in this one. I need to go up or down one or two. It's a lot easier to see when you have markings on the, and, on the cord itself and already this is pretty close especially when I have four shafts this almost always works eight shafts I usually have to tweak but four shafts it's almost it's almost perfect almost always I might have to tweak one or two but that's it